This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this uh, lecture is on sales tax, uh, which in the UK is uh, VAT, but um, they give it different names in different countries. Uh, but I uh, appreciate this is not a tax exam, so you can't be tested on uh, detailed rules relating to sales tax. But you are expected to know basically how it works, and more importantly, uh, how it affects um, the debits and credits. In most questions, we completely ignore sales tax. You'll see in all the earlier chapters, I've made no mention of sales tax at all. Uh, any questions on sales tax will be specifically on sales tax, specifically. Uh, if it's not specifically on sales tax, we ignore it. Uh, however, uh, before I um, show you the things you need for the exam and the entries, it is important that you appreciate basically how it works. And a lot of people think they know, uh, but in reality, don't. Um, so, although they won't be, you won't have to write an essay, how does it work? Um, none of it makes sense unless you are clear about the way the system basically works. And so, just for a bit of fun, it won't take long. I'm going to do you a really simple little illustration. Suppose you were buying a jumper made of wool. Now, where does that jumper come from? Um, they're going to have various stages in that, and I'm oversimplifying here. Uh, but first of all, it all starts with a sheep. You've got a farmer who owns a sheep. There's a sheep. Um, what happens? The farmer, if you like, grows the sheep, takes the wool and sells the wool to a knitter. Uh, a knitter. Well, it would be clear when I draw a picture, I suppose. Those people have needles and turn the wool uh, into a jumper. And so the knitter, sorry, uh, the knitter uh, knits a jumper and then sells it to the shop. Uh, that's not very good. That's supposed to be the jumper on display in the shop. And then, of course, the shop sells it to you. I'm not very good at drawing, as you can see. But there's you wearing uh, the jumper. All right, so now that I'm saying there are the stages. Obviously, I am simplifying it enormously. But let's now... Suppose there is no sales tax at all. Ignore sales tax for the minute. And uh, let's look at each in turn. Uh, suppose the farmer um, has no costs. I mean, the, far the, the lamb just, I know they do have costs in real life, but the, um, the sheep is just eating grass and so on. So the farmer takes the wool uh, and sells it for let's say ten dollars to the knitter. Uh, what about the knitter? Well, again, forget any other costs the knitter has. Uh, the net, the, the knitter uh, obviously had to pay. The cost was ten dollars. They want to make a profit, and so maybe they sell it to the shop for what shall we say fifteen dollars. And they make a profit of five. The farmer, I'm saying, have no costs. So they made a profit of uh, ten. Uh, the shop, the shop, they had to pay uh, the knitter fifteen. Again, I know they'll have lots of other costs, but I just want to keep this very simple. 
Uh, suppose they sell it for ooh, 40. And so they make a profit of 1525. And finally, of course, you buy it, and how much do you pay? You pay 40. So there we are. Now there I was ignoring tax completely. However, the rule is uh, that um, each person, the farmer, the knitter, the shop, uh, they have to add on uh, tax, sales tax, which they pay over to the state. So let me take the same example, same figures, but let's assume there is sales tax of, let's say, 20%. Now, every country has their own rate. You know, in the UK, it's one rate. In other countries, it's another rate. But the system works in the same way. So just see what happens here. First of all, the farmer. The farmer has to add on tax at 20%. And so they will sell, it was going to be 10, 20% is 2, they'll sell for $22. Uh, no, they won't, I beg your pardon, $12. Uh, 10 plus is 20%. However, of that $12, although that's what they'll charge the knitter, uh, the farmer can't keep all $12. $2 of that was tax, and so they pay the state those $2, and they keep the remaining 10 So it's made no difference to the farmer. They still end up with $10, but they had to charge 12 and I say again, of the $12 they get from the knitter, $2 the farmer has to pay to the state, $10 they can keep. What about uh, the knitter? The knitter was going to charge 15 However, they'll now charge 15 plus, they have to add on 20% tax. 20% of 15 is 3 So they'll charge the shop 18 how much did they have to pay the farmer? The farmer charged them $12. And so they end up with a net $6. However, they can't keep all $6 because the rule is they've got to pay the state any tax they've collected so remember, they were charging an extra $3 to the shop. But they can subtract any tax they've suffered that they have to pay. So they charge the shop an extra $3. That's due to the state. But when they paid the farmer $12, $2 of that was tax. And so they pay the state the net amount. And so how much are they left with? Well, remember, the shop gave them 18. They paid the farmer 12, so they did have $6. $1 has to go to the state. And so they keep the remaining $5. So apart from the hassle of keeping records, it's made no difference. They still end up with five dollars. What about the shop? Well, they were going to charge you 40, but they've got to add on tax at 20%. 20% of 40 is 8, so they'll charge 48. How much have they had to pay to the knitter? Well, the knitter sent them a bill for 18. And so they end up with a net 30 in cash. But again, they can't keep all that because they've got to pay over to the state. And the amount they pay over to the state is the tax they charged. 
Well, when they charge you, remember they added on eight, 20% they added on eight. The amount they pay to the state is the tax they charge less the tax they've suffered. And when they paid the knit of the 18, that 18, three dollars of that was tax. And so they'll pay the state five dollars. So they did have net cash of 30. Five dollars has had to be paid to the state. And so they keep the remaining 25. And it's made no difference. Without tax, they'd have ended up with 25. With tax, they still end up with 25. Again, there's hassle involved, you know, recording, and you've got to keep records of the state and pay it over. But otherwise, it's made no difference. Finally, what about you, though? Without tax, you'd have paid 40. With tax, ah, the shop's now charging you 48. And so, in fact, the only person who suffered is you. The farmer still ended up keeping $10. Uh, the knitter still ended up keeping 5 The shop still ended up keeping 25 So, as I kept saying, apart from the hassle involved, it made no difference to them. But you're the person who suffered. You've ended up paying $8 more. And it's actually a very clever system. I can remember before this tax was invented, there used to be a tax in the UK, but it was only ever when the shop finally sold it. So, OK, when the shop sold it, they'd have 20%. It was $8. It's still $8, but see how the state's collected it. The farmer paid $2. He didn't suffer. He was... Charge two dollars extra to the knitter. Uh, the knitter paid an extra dollar. They didn't suffer it. They charged more to the shop, and they'd already been charged some by the farmer. Uh, the shop, they paid an extra five. And so, in total, the state has received eight. But the only person who suffered is you, the final consumer. You're paying $8 more than you otherwise would have. But the way the state collects the tax, there's a little bit all the way. You know, it may take a year from the sheep uh, to you buying it in the shop. But at each stage, the government, the state, is getting a bit of the tax. Two from the farmer, another one from the knitter, another five from the shop. Um, it's a very clever system. It's called value added in the UK because you know the knitter added value, the jumper was worth more, the shop added value and charged more. At each stage the value is going up, the state gets a bit more tax. Now sorry that's a little bit messy but that's how it works so do be clear because it will, uh, that's the reason why the entries when we come to them are what they are. All right, um, now there are two separate things that can be asked in the exam. First of all, is the actual calculation of the tax, and that's on the next page. Uh, and here, be careful, it's not hard, but be careful and read questions carefully. Example one, Alpha sells goods at a net or tax exclusive price of 150. So they're saying that's the price ignoring the tax. The rate of sales tax is 16%. Well, as I showed in that little illustration with the sheep, you have to add on tax at whatever the set rate is. And you'll be told the rate in the exam. It could be anything. But they have to add on tax and actually charge more. So without tax, the price was 150 and we call that the net price, or tax exclusive. It's excluding the tax. 
They add on the sales tax, well, 16% of 150 is how much? Oh, 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 oh I'll use my calculator. 16% uh, of 150 is 24. And so the full amount invoiced, the full charge, is 174. Uh, and that's called the gross price or tax inclusive. So no problem there. If we know what the net price is, add on tax at the relevant percentage of that net price, uh, and there is the full cost, the amount that will be on the invoice. Uh, that's fine. And certainly when businesses are selling to other businesses, they tend to quote the net price. They say, oh, we charge 150, and there'll be a note saying, uh, tax will be added on at 16%. However, of course, if you go to an ordinary shop, you know, you go to buy a jumper, uh, you assume the price on the label is the price you'll actually pay. You don't expect to go to the counter and suddenly find that, oh, there's an extra 16% being added on. And so, um, other businesses and certainly shops, the price they quote already includes tax. So look at example two. Beta sells goods at a gross price of 120. Well, that is the price including the tax. And well, you can be asked here again, the rate of tax is 16%. You can be asked, what is the net price? What is the price without tax? And how much is the tax? So it's a bit of working backwards. Now, some people find this terribly easy. Some people find it takes practice. I'll do it slowly for everybody's benefit. But it's really, a, if you like, a simple bit of algebra. You see, just suppose the net price was x. My brain's going too fast. Um, they've got to add on 16% of the net price, so the tax would be 16% or 0.16 times x. And so the total price, or the gross price, 1x plus 0.16x is 1.16x. So x is the net price, the gross price, 1.16 times x. We know what the gross price is, it's 120. And so, what is the net price, the price without tax? Well, if 1.16x is 120, divide both sides by 1.16. Which gives... My calculator went wrong, sorry, sorry, my fingers did. 120 divided by 1.16 um, is 103.44. Uh, and this is one of the few areas in the exam where when you actually deal in cents, you've seen before, usually do everything in dollars. But our question on sales tax, do be prepared to work in cents. So that is the net price. And of course it does check, because if that's the price without tax, the tax will be 16% of that, which is how much? At 16.55, and therefore the gross price, 120, as I say, it does check. So make sure you've got that. I said uh, before, for some people that's very obvious and very easy. For others, you know, it depends how much arithmetic you've done in the past and how easy or hard you find it. Uh, for others, it does take a bit of practice, but make sure you do. Uh, and also read questions carefully. If you're given the net price 
the taxes percentage of that that you add on. If you give them the gross price, then it does mean this, I think you see what I mean, I say working backwards. And so look at example three, and I really do suggest you have a go at example three on your own. Uh, pause the lecture before watching me answer it. Have a go yourself and make sure. However, I will carry on. It tells us the gross price is 220, so that's the price including tax. Sales tax here is 17.5% and we want the net, the exclusive price. So again, I don't care which way you did it, as long as you get the right answer. I'll use the Lexis as I did before. If the net price is X, the tax is 17.5% of X or 0.175 times X. And therefore, the total charge or the gross price, 1x plus 0.175x is 1.175x. And that must be equal, we were given the gross price was 220. And therefore, the question wants to know what is the net price? Divide both sides by 1.175. Uh, gives me a net price of. Uh, I think 187.23. He wants to know uh, also what the amount of the tax is. Well, the tax, 17.5% always of the net price. Sorry, it's gone on again. 187.23 times 17.5% is 32.77. And does it check the gross price should be? Yep, it does. Is 220. So. It's not a hard exercise, but do practice, make sure you do it. Because once you've got it, uh, this is somewhere you should be able to uh, pick up marks quickly. All right, well, I'll pause this, stop this lecture here. The next lecture, the second, the last lecture on this, only a short one, but it's on how we actually account uh, for the tax and the double interest.